Jeez. My name is Deara, middle name Vachey, last name Taylor, and I am from Memphis, Tennessee. Being from Memphis shaped me into the woman I am today. Basically, it showed me that there's more to life than where you're from. And I think growing up in Memphis, is, well, where I'm from, it was kind of like a small area. Everybody knew everybody. Um, and, you know, living in a city like that, you kind of think that's the only place. Like, it's nowhere out. It's no way out. But it shaped me in a way, especially when I moved to um, Atlanta. It shaped me into, you know, realizing and knowing that it's more out there to life than where you're from. On my fifth grade graduation, we had to wear all white. And it was across the street at this church. Mm -hmm. well, yep, this is my school. I mean, my elementary school. Windridge Elementary, y'all. That's where your girl went. Cool. Yep, it was this um, school. I was on the step team. Mm -hmm. Big curve. I was on the step team in middle school. My elementary school was Windridge Ridge Elementary, and my middle school was Hickory Ridge Middle. Um, my middle school when I moved to Atlanta was Henderson, Henderson Mill Middle, and my high school was Lakeside High. It's where your girl went to high school, and I can remember one teacher that was nearly probably my favorite teacher here, and that was Miss Pitts. She was my cooking teacher is what I call her, but it's homemaking them. Graduated in 2014. I was on a dance team. What else did I do? That's probably it. <laughs> Anybody know Miss Pitts? Worker, let me know because I want to see her. Oh, and it's so funny because it was, I think, uh, I think my mom still has the pen, but I was, I got voted most likely to become famous. I had my first love here and first heartbreak. I remember coming to school, um, like on Valentine's Day, I used to have hella balloons, like all of that, flowers, like he used to do it up. He used to do it up for your girl. And I think we was together for like two, two years. My freshman year, I think, and my sophomore year. Actually, I think probably like majority of my high school year until like, until he graduated. But yeah, he broke my heart. And then we talked again after I graduated and then that was it. And I remember when I um, came here, my best friend, Shaniqua again. <laughs> the first girl who spoke to me when I was in um, middle school I remember she was moving, so I don't think she was coming to this school. So I was like, dang, who the hell I'm gonna talk to? <laughs> We're gonna be my friend. But yep, it was her, it was Khalil, um, Nato, I'm a Nata. Like, yeah. I feel like my high school experience was pretty good overall. I give it a seven, eight out of 10. But I actually miss, I miss high school. You know how like sometimes you don't really miss it, but I actually do miss high school. I feel like if I could do it again, I would. Like, I just missed the experience. It was actually lit. De'Ara and I became friends in 2010 or 2011, I believe. Um, and we met in high school, at Lakeside High School. Uh, we were both on the Purple Diamond dance team. So in high school, we were close. Um, and then I moved away, I think for college or I went to a different high school um, in another state. So then at some point we reconnected, you know, but we'd always keep in contact on social media, but we re reconnected when I moved back to Atlanta. And every time we link up, like we're always cooking something. Um, 
what and I'm from Senegal so Diara loves food so every time she wants to learn a new recipe she wants to see how to make something and then vice versa so she'll cook something then I'll share something from my country and we would just bond over that have like our deep conversations our fun conversations and she's always just trying to learn more about like my culture and stuff which I love because you know that is a part of who I am and like I said she loves to eat so she's gonna love it regardless uh, so that's definitely one big way that we tend to bond my school experience especially when I was in Memphis was pretty good you know I had a couple of friends here and there and when I moved to Atlanta it was it was new so for me to be in a whole new state and having to meet new people I would say it was it was okay for my first years um, when I first moved out here I was a shy person I don't really talk to nobody and you know when you're the new person everybody is kind of like who the who the hell is this new new person coming here so but one thing I do remember when I first moved here um, my first best friend in high school her name was Shaniqua and my boy best friend in high school, his name was Khalil, literally were the first people that ever spoke to me when I was, when I was new to the school. So I'll say overall, my, my school experiences was, it was pretty good, it was cool. My childhood, I feel like was amazing. Like literally anything I wanted, I got. And that was from my grandparents, from my mom, well, sometimes my mom, but when it came to my grandparents, they literally gave me anything I wanted, especially my granddaddy, he spoiled me so much. So it was good, like I feel like I had a great childhood. I grew up in a Christian household, like um, I was going to church. My granddaddy was actually a preacher. So, you know, I was raised in the church. In my teen years, um, I'll probably say it was, it was like I had the highs and lows because, you know, and during that time, you're kind of just trying to figure out yourself. And then me turning into my teen years, again, I moved to Atlanta in seventh grade. So I'm in a whole complete, completely different city than where I'm, you know, originally from or what I'm known to, known to only know about. So, you know, I had my highs and lows. And I have one sibling, one sibling only, and that's my brother, DeAndre Taylor. Hey, um, DeAndre, how y'all doing? Uh, and Who are you? De'Ara's big brother. Uh, I was telling them how you my brother and my only that's brother. Right. Only We're brother. literally the only siblings. Yeah, just me and her, uh, just hanging out here at Memphis 10, uh, you know? Glad to be here. Glad y'all here. Love you. Uh, I say she was kind of, kind of quiet, more introverted. I'll say, you know, she, 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 she became learned to be a little more extroverted as you know with with the career. When me and my sister used to stay with our auntie uh, here in Memphis, Tennessee, out in East Memphis. Um, you know, it was just me and her and my auntie. Um, I'd say that was probably like, you know, good times because we used to always uh, spend a lot of time together uh, watching TV in the bed, family feud on replay. Okay. Uh, that was actually when we were staying here before we moved back to Atlanta. Before we moved, we moved to, to Atlanta. Atlanta. Yep. So we had to finish out, I had to finish out sixth grade and you had to finish out eighth grade? Seventh grade. I was Seven going, going to the eighth grade. Yeah. You guys are two years apart. Yep. What, what about a year and a few months, almost two years, almost. I'm 25, going to be 26 yep. I'm today. About, I'm about to, <laughs> yep, pretty much, April yep. 17, which is when it's going live. So this is me again, little D. And that's my brother. Uh, I'm, uh, I was, I'm 27 years old. Uh, I'm a Scorpio. Uh, okay, I, I had something to say about them. No, <laughs> November, November 13th. Uh, awesome. But um, but yeah, so so me, me and my sister had plenty of time, uh, great times together. Um, you know, we, we we went on plenty of family trips. I'll say that 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 was a good time too because you know we we spent a lot of time with our grandfather on the road, uh, traveling. You know, not 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 just me and Diara, but also um, our, our our other cousins as well. So so you know, it was pretty much a lot of bonding time we had. Um, I mean, even in Atlanta, you know, uh, you know, I, I just watched her the whole time as she, you know, did did her thing, you know. So when, once we got to Atlanta, it was pretty much show time for her. Um, you know, we, we it was plenty of nice arguing over the computers and stuff. You know, you know, <laughs> I, I just want to check my Facebook or something. You, you know, I, I give you the laptop right back. You know, but um, well, tell her how we argued, we fought yeah, over yeah. that computer, and you gave me a black eye. 
that, that not no, that, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened? That, that's not true. She she attacked me. <laughs> uh, she attacked me because because of the computer she wanted to be on. It was her, I, I get you know it's her computer basically. You know it's yeah. not it, we we didn't share the computer. She wanted the computer. <laughs> so yeah, we, we we fought over that a lot. Um, we argued, but, but yeah. like as we got older, um, we, we pretty much. You know, once we moved to Atlanta and started getting older and stuff, we, we just pretty much were just chill. chill after that, yeah. The number one person on my list that inspired me is probably my granddad. Because my granddaddy actually dropped out of middle school and he grew up to own his own tax business. And it's so crazy because people be like, when I tell people the story, they be like, wow. So my granddaddy dropped out of high school, but he knew how to count. Like, he knew math off the back of his hand. Like, like just think about it. Like, dropping out of middle school and knowing 50 times 2,075 just right off the back without even having to calculate it. He knew it. First man and started a tax business from that. When I be on the calculator, he's already calculated in his head. Yeah, it's <laughs> so funny because I be telling people the numbers. how he um, dropped out of middle school, but mm -hmm. knew math so good. So it's just yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, did. Yeah, been it, this business he started in '68, and uh, quite a quite a few of our customers are word of mouth generations, third and fourth generation. Had a lady come over yesterday. She said. I've been with him since 68, so wow. that's, yeah, yeah. 60, and, 1968? Yeah, and wow. their kids and their grandkids and some of the great can, grandkids come to the tax business, so it's amazing what he started, exactly. yeah. Exactly. And, and hopefully we going. can keep it up, yeah, that, keep that legacy up, yeah. yeah. That's what he wanted. Yeah, this is supposed to be the family home. That's what he wanted it to be. That's what we're going to try to keep it at. Yeah. We dug all that out by hand, bro. Yeah, that was, that was all done by hand. We had to dig it all out. This house was just like all the other houses around here before. But like I said, Pop had a vision. So we're going to try to keep it going for him. Yeah. For the family. It's a place for the family to come and gather and always, you know, have a place to come to. Anybody can come here, stay and, you know, like I said, that's his vision. We're just gonna try to keep it going, bro. Well, I would say my biggest inspiration was probably my granddaddy. He was always a go-getter. He was always about his money. So I would say he was top of the list. It was a napkin holder and napkins for fitting it. But this is what I made. Okay. It was to my granddaddy from the area. That's how I used to write. <laughs> and then to my grandma from the area. And I made this in elementary school. And it was like a, a napkin holder, so it was something under it, but I don't know where that went. And then the napkins go inside it. Granny, you should tell them the story of how you and Granddaddy met. Tell them. We all went together for one week. And y'all got married. I miss my husband so much. This, was, this is my Granddaddy memorial that my uncle did. Didn't you do this, Tony? Yeah. So yeah, after he passed, it's just all his pictures, pictures with his kids, grandkids, his shoes, his hat, mugs, all of that. I don't even remember this. What is this? I just found some stuff. You got a lot of stuff right here. Yeah, for sure. This, their passport pictures. Yep, that was him. And this is actually... From last year, 2020. And the part I put there was the closet. That's where all these clothes were. Oh, in this closet, just yeah. leave it how it is. Last year, we threw him an 85th um, birthday party. Was it last year? Yep. Yep, that was last year in June. He's a Gemini. <laughs> Next will probably be my mom. My mom is pretty much, you know, who raised me growing up like all my life, my mom and my grandparents. But she taught me how to pretty much be a woman, how to, you know, stand on your own two feet without anybody. So I would say my mom, and then next I would probably say my cousin Keisha because she was kind of like the person I was tight to growing up. Like I was the only girl, I was the youngest. I was the baby girl before my cousin Leah came along. And she actually moved to Atlanta before we moved to Atlanta. So she was um, coming to Atlanta to, you know, pursue 
um, being a lawyer, which she is now, which she is my lawyer, my cousin is my lawyer, she's my attorney. So she inspired me a lot growing up as well. I am Tell my name is Derek. The Almighty High. Can you that? Tell Derek. Amazing. Almighty High. Almighty High. Amazing. Almighty High. Amazing. Almighty High. Amazing. 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 They talk about the cute kids. Even count. That's why my uh, that's why my first song is a diamond. Diamond in the rough. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> when I had my son, I actually wanted twins. I wanted a boy and a girl. But she came a year, about a year and eight months. So they're like close to two years apart. So it was exciting and everybody enjoyed it. It was like she was the little princess. Dira was an animated kid. Um, she loved clothes, loved to play dress up. She was one girl amongst uh, six boy cousins. So she had that tomboy side to her, but she was still very much so a girly girl. So clothes has always been a passion for her. This is me and all of my little cousins, well, older cousins. I grew up with all boys, so I was literally the only girl, as you can see. <laughs> It was me, my brother, my cousin, little, my big cousin James, big cousin Josh. Oh, okay, sorry. And then my big cousin Jacquez. So this is us. Honestly, I feel like it shaped me to be the person I am today. Like, obviously, grew up fighting. I literally could be all of them. Like, <laughs> it's funny. Like me and my brother, we would always fight, but like I'll always win. But it was like, how do you let your little sister win? But I feel like growing up with all boys, it kind of. I was a tomboy. So like growing up, I was a tumble, but now it's like completely different. It's like the opposite is switched. But like, I feel like I know a lot yeah. growing up with a lot of boys, so. Growing up, I always been into beauty and fashion. I love having my hair to get. I love having, you know, nice clothes on. Like I said, I love shopping. So growing up, and also the crazy thing about it, like my main thing would probably be accessories because growing up, my granddaddy used to always buy all his daughters and all his granddaughters, um, jewelry, fur coats, like literally all of that. So I was just always, yeah, that was always like a thing, like fashion, style, all of that. Dear has always been into fashion and beauty. Um, you know, back in high school, she, you know, fresh kicks, new kicks, matching kicks with the hair tie, with the shirt and everything like that. So that was definitely Dear. And even during the high school days where like the cut up shirts weren't that popular, this girl was wearing cut up shirts, matching it with her outfits. Like y'all know those, um, the little vests, <laughs> the little denim vest. She would match it, style it with her shoes, nails done, hair ties, everything. Like, so this has always been dear for sure. She has been into fashion and been stylish. If I had some pictures, I would show them because even as a child, uh, my sister gave her a um, costume for her birthday and she dressed from head to toe. So it was, it was amazing. So she has always been into fashion. She has always been into fashion and beauty. And I say that because um, I noticed that early on she would get into her princess uniforms and put on her heels and um, just always dress up. She loves all the stuff, cause I remember when I was working at Nike, she always used to come and tell me about the latest tennis shoes that she wanted. So she was always up on fashion. I remember one time vividly when we lived in, I lived in South Haven, we went to Target and she was just picking out all of the stuff. I'm like, girl, we know, cause first of all, we didn't have our money. You know? okay, we <laughs> so she was picking out all the stuff. She was like, I want this, this, this. So she's always been super fashion forward. This has always been, she's always been fashion for, always had a lot of personality, but she's always just been herself. Ever since I've known her, she's always been herself. But she has always been about, you know, her appearance, making sure that she was well put together. She was always stylish and was on the cutting edge when it came to clothing, as well as her hairstyles, jewelry, the whole nine. One thing I value most is family. Top of the list, probably family. Family, bonding time with my family, friends, just, yeah, just family. Like I cherish that a lot. 
So yeah, Leah is like my little sister I never had. Leah, come on, say good things about me. <laughs> Ask her some questions. She's saying things about me. <laughs> she was like my big sister that I never had, and she just made everything fun. Oh, when I used to come in your room, and you used to believe me. Girl, bro, I, I used to come in her room while she was on the phone. I don't know who she was on the phone. <laughs> she used to be on the phone, and I came in her, and she was very mean. She was telling me to get out. She made me feel unwanted. <laughs> <laughs> but now you feel wanted. She made me sleep on the floor one day. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Really, girl? It was raining. I remember that day. Oh. I stayed up there whole night. Why she wow. was sleeping peacefully in the bed. <laughs> I really don't remember. But now she let me sleep in her bed. So, see, I but told now you. Now I got a bed for you to sleep in. Yeah. yeah. You can sleep in my bed. Nah, I like the other bed. So, she'll be on the phone doing what she's doing. Yep. Mm hmm. You heard that. Privacy. Who needs privacy? What can she know? I call her Sissy, Sissy Poo because, like, she's like my big sister. So, yeah. And we also call her Dee Dee because. You know, her brother is DeAndre, and she's De'Ara, so he was D, and she was D.D. De'Ara's nicknames growing up were D.D., D.D. Poo, and then to me, she's always been my munchkin. My nickname for her was D.D. Poo because she just was cuddly and soft and very mild-mannered. My boys named her Spotlight because of her eyeballs. <laughs> Spotlight, because she had big eyes. She had big eyes. We call her eyeball because she had big eyes. Those penetrating eyes, she could just look at you dead in your face and it's just like she could see right through you. <laughs> I remember again, one Sunday we were at church and uh, she stopped by this lady that was sitting at the bench and she just stopped and just stared at her for a couple of minutes and I'm like, come on here, <laughs> you know? So piercing eyes. It's the eyes. Like, yeah. my eyes never got smaller. Like, my eyes always been big. Uh, she had a hernia. And when my, when we were trying to potty train her, she thought her navel is where she's supposed to use the restroom. So she was sitting over the toilet, squeezing her navel. I said, no, that's not how you use it. So I had to uh, tell her she had to sit on the pot. She had her, when she had it removed. And it was the outpatient surgery. And she was in the back seat with my mom. And her mother came out driving so fast and hit a rut. I hit a bump. And she said, you hurting my navel! Oh, mama, you hurt my navel. <laughs> so I had to go really slow. She kind of scared me. But that was funny to me. She was only a baby then. We didn't know she could talk, but she talked that day. She was always playful. She liked to play with people years. And that's mostly what she did with me. Every time uh, she came around, she always sat in my lap and played with my ears all the time. De'Ara playing with people ears, like, I don't know what it was, but anytime De'Ara start come, you know, scooching in right next to you, you just better be prepared. She about to start playing in your ear. She was very young and uh, I was going to take her a bath and uh, I had bubbles in the water and she was extremely scared of bubbles. She wouldn't get in the tub at all. It's like you try to put her in, she drawed up her legs and she would not get in with those bubbles. I had to let the water out and put plain water in. And I was like, what in the Sam Hill is wrong with this girl? She don't like bubbles. So I am a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority and her mom would always give me a hard time about that. So one time I called home from school and her mom was like, say ski we to Keisha, which is the AKAs. And she just wanted Deara to say ski we. And so Deara, who had a very deep voice at this time was like, Keisha, my mama told me to tell you ski we. And it was just very Deara. She's always spoke her mind. She's always said what she wanted to. No filter. It hasn't changed today. I remember I had to go save her. She had got herself in some trouble and her mom was about to whoop her. And I had to go over there and save her because I don't know exactly what she did, but I knew she got a whooping for it and I had to go in the room and save her. 
that's not the room I stayed in, but that's the room I would stay in. And this is my grandparents' room. My granny. So this is the room I stayed in. Literally, this twin bed has literally always been here. It used to be me and my brother and all of my uh, older cousins in this room. And then, fun fact, my granddaddy never slept in the bed. He would always sleep on the couch. The couch right up there. He would never sleep in the bed. He would always just sleep on the couch. And this is my mommy. <clears throat> she was a cheerleader. She did cheerleader. She did gymnastics. This is my granny room. This is me. I was actually a dancer. I was a dancer and I was a cheerleader and I was on a step team. I was on a step team in middle school. I was on a dance team and cheer team in middle school and I was on a dance team in high school. So that's me and one of my dance. And this is also me. It's literally so many pictures in this house. <laughs> How do you collect so many pictures over time? But that's me, that's little D. You see me, baby, with the matching scarf and the matching bag. I always styling and profiling. Hey, I'm her niece. No, I'm her aunt. I'm your niece. She's my niece. I was telling them you were the last sister because they already met Mimi and Ann. And uh -huh. then they have to see my mom. But they have to. Last so what you doing? Nothing. What's your new thing? Nothing. I'm filming a documentary because I'm releasing my brand soon. And I just oh, what's your brand? Sunglasses. Okay. <laughs> I gotta see that. Yeah, I gotta show them to you, but yeah. yeah. I need to get some. Look at the suns. Hurting my eyes. <laughs> yeah, so that was coming out on my birthday uh -huh. this year, so April 17th. Okay, good. She okay. had beautiful eyes. She was always beautiful. They were always energetic, very expressionable. Um, DeAndre, he was very expressionable. He was a little quieter. But Diera was always the one who was really kind of outgoing. <laughs> she always was creating, coming up with things that they needed to do and, you know, get to school. So she was always active, too, moving around relatively quickly. Because <laughs> around this thing, they used to run around in circles <laughs> with my babies. <laughs> you know, yeah. my babies were older, but when my babies were little, we would run around to tire them out. So we would run around with Dear and DeAndre to try to tire them out sometimes. So my first auntie Sherry was my mama's sister. She yeah, was she taking had. us to school. Yep. And we just did so much stuff, you know. He threw his backpack in her window, yep. broke her window. window. We're waiting to go to school because uh -huh. he's dropping us off at school. Uh -huh. And then I don't even know what happened, but he's like swinging he on that backpack. The backpack. And he broke the, broke the window. Yeah, that was terrible. We could get the fighting, so I slammed him so hard into her. Oh that, my God, we gotta go that, to Sherry House because it's still there, isn't it? That wall, it? yeah, still. I slammed it so hard to the wall, made a dent into the wall, which the, the dent is still there, so we gotta go to my house so y'all can see the dent. When I would pull up to the school and see her run out the door ready to come <laughs> to the car, that's what was joyful because she would always smile. She always had a big smile. And uh, seeing her run to the car, that was very warm. <laughs> and then. My favorite memory, I think, is when we went on a cruise Disney to the cruise. Disney cruise. Yep. And that was just phenomenal. We had lots of fun. We toured Bahamas, wasn't it? Yep, it was the Bahamas. Bahamas. We toured the Bahamas. We also went out to this some kind of island beach thing, and they were on the beach playing and getting in the water and just having a tons of fun. So I really enjoyed that time with her. And she knew how to be a, 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 a mature young woman, <laughs> as well as to play with the kids, you know, who were little bitty kids coming up, her nieces and nephews or cousins. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what happened is that she was able to really play with them to, and then still be who she was, and then hang with us older people. <laughs> well, to see you, Good Sherry. to see you too, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Love you. Thank you. Love you too. Bye bye. My interests and hobbies would probably be top of the list is cooking. I love to cook um, and shop. I love to shop. 
and eat. She loves to eat. I'll eat. And I'll seeing eat. her eat at that table, she ate everything. I think she tried everything on the menu. Literally. And then she don't gain a whole lot of weight. Or at least keep <laughs> it. I love seafood. I love crab legs. I love shrimp. I love lobster. And keep in mind, like growing up, <laughs> like all this, all like seafood, like I grew up eating that all the time. Like my granddaddy would always buy for us. We would always go to Red Lobster. Or my mom would get um, seafood from the store and get it steamed. So like that was, that's probably like my favorite dish. But growing up, I loved my grandma's potatoes she made for breakfast, salmon croquette. My granddaddy, he used to always make me oxtails, neck bones, pig feet, pigtails, like all of that. So I love all of that. Oh, since this is coming out on my birthday, which my brain will be with me today, we can add a little baby. Ed, Matrix So I first started doing YouTube with Ken and I don't know, it, it came out of nowhere. Like when we first started, before we even started YouTube, we were doing like Instagram. So we were just making videos on Instagram and people was like, y'all should start making YouTube videos. And we were like, what? And it was like YouTube videos. So we didn't know anything about like the YouTube space before we started. So when we, when we randomly jumped into it, people was like, start making YouTube videos. We were like, okay, we'll make YouTube videos. But keep in mind too, we didn't know that you can make money off of it or anything. So we just started making videos without making money, but it was just something we enjoyed doing. People enjoyed watching us. So that's kind of like how I started YouTube. I feel like so far this journey of being an influencer and being, you know, in the limelight has been nothing but a blessing. It's a lot of ups, but it's also a lot of downs. And I feel like being in this space and being an influencer and being somebody that, you know, people look up to all around the world, I feel like it has its days because sometimes, like I say this all the time, like people, you know, just look at me as Deara on social media and not Deara as a human or not Deara just as a real person who has feelings and who has, you know, you know, like a life outside of just being a social media influencer, just a person who, you know, has followers. So I would say that's the down, but the high is, you know, all the opportunities that I get, all the cool people I meet. Um, honestly, I would say it's more ups than it is downs, but there are downs for sure. I was glad for her. I know that. I was happy for her. Cause I knew she could do it. I think for me, because I was on the journey with her in a different way, it really wasn't shocking. And I have 17 years of working in the entertainment space. So I've seen quite a few clients where they start and how it goes. So I think that some days it is more shocking to me that I work for De'Ara as her attorney than it is that she is a famous YouTuber. Everything she uh, that I saw that she did on, on YouTube was all positive, you know, and, and so I would always tell people about it once I found out about what she did. The, the younger people would tell them, you know, who she was and what she did and, you know, you guys need to try to follow behind De'Ara, you know, look, you know, follow in her footsteps, you know. It was crazy. And I think my first experience were things that really taken off. She was in town and we was at Wolf Chase Mall at Bath and Body Works. And everyone just kept coming up to her. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like looking around and I'm like, wow. You know, it was, it was a totally different. It was, it just had, I realized then at that point, it had really taken off. I didn't know at first. I didn't know how popular she was until I went to Six Flags with her one, one year and everybody started running up to her. And I was like, okay. So that's when I actually found out the popularity of Deara. She always had something in her. And I knew that one day she was gonna do something because she had big dreams. So I always just stayed the same. And I always told Deara, you know, no matter what you do, I'm gonna always be there for you, your choices. You know, those are your choices, and I'm going to bag you 100% because I love her. So, you know, hey, it is what it is with me and the air. My greatest fear is probably, which 
I feel like I haven't really overcome, but I had to step out of it. And that was pretty much anxiety. Like I had to get out of that, which I still have anxiety and I still have my moments. But that's the one thing that, you know, I kind of learned to deal with and the thing I know how to, you know, handle. You know, meeting new people and, you know, always being noticed when I go out places. That was one, one fear I had and just coming out of my shell speaking in front of people, speaking in front of cameras and all of that, and just, you know, meeting people. That's one big fear I had <laughs> that I had to get out of because obviously I'm gonna meet people all the time. I'm gonna have to talk. So that's probably one of my biggest fears that I had to get out of. I was actually proud of her because she came out her shell from being really shy. So I was just excited for her. You could tell she was made for the cameras. I think about her mom wanted to get into modeling and how it didn't happen for her, but you see that next generation, she did, and she does it so well that you can just kind of tell she knows how to pose, she knows what to do, on point, you know, so it's really good to see that. Dara's shyness did not grow into like just assertiveness and confidence until she really got into doing YouTube. So my role in Deara's life is multifaceted. Even though I'm her cousin, I serve as her attorney as well. And we began having her, um, as well as her former partner, Ken, do speaking engagements. And I still remember one of the very first ones that we did at Clark Atlanta. She was just so shy. And this was after their YouTube page had launched. This was after she had been on Instagram. Because the difference is you get to be behind the scenes, you get to be kind of one-to-one -one with the camera versus in front of people. Once she started speaking, you saw this personality just burst onto the scene that the public was able to see that we as her family had always seen behind the scenes. So I would say once we start having them do more speaking engagements, yeah, the flower opened up. thing that keeps me going is number one my supporters and my grandfather like my family and really I, I would say my supporters like my real genuine supporters because I feel like without them I wouldn't be here and I also look at that look at that as a blessing a blessing to have people who look up to you have people who adore you love you that's a blessing and I feel like for me to not want to give up and continue to do this I think about them because it's like like girl like you really have people out there who really who really you know mess with you who really love you so I'll probably say that's one of the top things that keep me going. It has been wonderful watching her become the young lady she has become um, not only um, her being successful but as well as her taking on more things and being and managing those things and being responsible. And one of the things that I admire the most is that she remained level and she doesn't allow that to go to her head. And you know, I'm I'm very proud of her and all the her accomplishments that she have achieved over the years. I was really shocked that she was a, what do you call it, social media star? I didn't know what that was, you know? And I was saying, how do you make money? But she came into her own, and I'm very proud of her because I'm really a supporter of entrepreneurs. I've done it most of my career life, and I've also been in marketing, so I understand what she was doing. And that's a great opportunity for her to really kind of set her own space and to develop her own brands mm -hmm. and to be able to earn revenue and to create the life and the things and the, the people and the environment that she wants. So it's really important to really kind of lead uh, your life the way you want to and being an entrepreneur is one of the great ways to get that done. I'm very proud, I'm excited. I'm uh, excited to see her grow more. Um, it's, I'm just very uh, proud of her. It's a blessing to see her shine the way she's shining. I'm loving every minute of it for her. I just want her to keep on going and stay focused and just keep her mind right and her eyes focused on God and 
you know, don't worry about nothing, just be yourself. The advice I would give to Deira as she continues on her journey is remain humble because there are so many people who have walked this path that fail to realize those things that have made them famous um, or that have given them access. And when you forget that, that fall comes very quickly. So remain humble. Remember who your source is, being God. And don't forget about your people that's been down with you since day one. Dear, keep your mind stayed on Christ. Keep your mind stayed on Christ.